Hi, I'm Peter Beasy. I'm the editor-in-chief of Inside Dental Technology. I'd like to welcome my two friends, Justin and Steve, from Arata Dental Labs. Hi, guys. How are you? Hi. How you doing? Yeah. Welcome today. I know you guys are very busy, so I'll try not to keep you too long. Um, one of the reasons you're, you are so busy is because of the amount of zirconia materials that you're currently processing through your laboratory. And because of that, we're considering you zirconia experts, and we have some questions uh, regarding some of the newer materials that are out there. I believe you recently got to utilize some of the Be Smile Aconia Zirconia. And I would really like to get some of your feedback on the product and the process and how it felt. So I guess first and most importantly, what was the material, which materials did you have and did you have a wide variety to play with and test? Um, so at first, you know, in the last year, we've gotten more and more zirconia just to go on. I think the plight of the industry is alloys to the roof even when uh, those who weren't using zirconia last year were now using zirconia. So we use a lot of zirconia in the lab. And we got a sampling of each different uh, disc. We have like five or six discs. It was five different ones that were sent. So we have the, um, uh, the TTML, which was the translucent multilayer, the SHTML, which was the multilayer super translucency, and then the uh, HT plus white and the ST, which are like the white, you know, that you paint the color on yourself. So we had a pretty good sampling to try out. So, so twofold on that, I guess. In general, in the lab, what is your go-to materials? And I don't mean brand, I mean um, pre-centered, uh, pre-colored, multi-layer, white, A1. What's your normal range that you kind of go to? We typically use the pre-shaded and we don't use the, the multi-layer all that often only because of the, the nature behind it that, with the multi-layer, you have to nest the zirconia, the, the crown in the right position. And if it's off at all, or if the angle is a little tilted, then the gradation's in the wrong position. That's always tough, especially when you're, you know, trying to get, you know, all the units in and out. So we tend to use pre-shaded, you know, flat color throughout the zirconia and then use a stain and glaze afterwards to sometimes do the customization to it. And when you played with the Aconia Zirconia, did you find, did you obviously tested the pre-shaded as well as the multi-layered? Uh, what did you find? Was there any difference in the nesting or the colorization and how well did it fit with the workflow in the laboratory? The pre-shaded is, you know, right on point with the color. So we had, you know, we checked it against the shade guides, everything matched up nicely. The multi-layer is very similar to some of the other brands. The nice thing about this one is that it's not like a sharp transition line. It actually has a gradation through the, the whole puck, which makes it a little bit more forgiving. So you're not seeing sometimes those, those clean lines between the different layers. So, you know, that part came out very nicely with it. I also noticed that, you know, some brands, uh, you end up doing one shade lighter in order to get the right shade. This matches the shade on the uh, label, which I, I, I don't like to have to play games. So A1 is A1, B2 is B2. We didn't have to do a shade lighter and then, you know, stain it, make it a uh, nicer shade. So it's very true shaded. So for that usually means that the density is more accurate in density, right? Because color is one thing, but the, the amount of saturation of that color is challenging. So I think the point you're making is that you're, you're getting a truer response based on the, the density of the disc itself. So what, that sounds great. And then I also believe, Justin, by what you said, nesting might be slightly easier based on the fact that the gradation of the transition is a little bit easier on the multi-layer. Yeah, exactly. You don't have to be as conscious of being the exact position or knowing, you know, where your incisal third is. You have a little bit more leeway onto it. I mean, you still have to obviously think about it and not have it in the wrong angle, but it's definitely a lot easier than some of the previous generations of the zirconia have been. Great. And any difference in the milling itself? Any um, milling or sintering? pros or cons or, or, or very similar to what you're seeing? It's, it's very similar. I mean, it's, you know, if you're milling zirconia, it's pretty much, you know, if you're doing it properly with what you're using, it'll fit in without any issue. You, you know, it, it follows the same milling parameters as the other zirconia we've used. And obviously you load the sintering, you know, cycle in for the specific material. And, uh, you know, what I liked is that for the most part, it's the exact same sintering cycle across the board for the different materials unless you're doing like those full arches where it's a little bit longer. And obviously if you're doing the fast center, that is only for the certain, you know, single units, but for a general overnight centering, it's one program for all the different options, which was kind of nice to have. 
Great. And any differential coloration or staining up afterwards, uh, taking to the stains? I know that's always kind of the biggest challenge, I think, with zirconias right today is when you're trying to colorize them, especially as a secondary process rather than in the intake, it becomes a little more challenging for the surface. I don't know if you've noticed anything, any pros that you could share with us about that. I mean, everything, you know, we, we use the same workflow we've used for the other zirconia and they haven't had an issue staining and glazing it. So, you know, it sort of fits into, you know, following everything that we've used previously. We've mostly used the Ivoclar uh, uh, porcelain, so it fit in well with that system and nothing, you know, jumped out as being, you know, an extra hoop to jump through or anything like that. So great. I mean, I think the positive of that is what you're saying is you were able to bring these into your system and put them through the stream of the lab just as if you weren't changing a product exactly. that works as well or better in some areas or same or the same in other areas, which is kind of a, a nice thing. That people can be comfortable with the transition, right? Well, great. Well, listen, I really appreciate you guys spending a few minutes with me and thank you for organizing your time away from the, the bench for a few minutes. Uh, I appreciate having you here and I, and I thank you for your input. Thank you very much. Yeah, it's great to be here. Thank you. We'll see you guys soon. Take care. Thank you. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.